Welcome everybody to the show today. Steve, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing great. I want to do just a little bit of housekeeping at the very start of the show today because um, I want to make sure that everybody knows that we're really trying to get on all the podcast players with this podcast. We should be on most of the podcast players. Last night I went and did a lot of uh, putting us up to some of the smaller ones. But folks, there are there are literally hundreds of little podcast players and we're on Spotify. We're on Apple podcast and Google. We're on Stitcher. We're on a bunch of other ones. I know we're now on, um, that a bunch of different ones that have the word cast in it and <laughs> overcast <laughs> and all sorts of stuff like that. First cast and all these different things. Yeah. So we're trying, if for some reason you are not finding us on your podcast app you like and you have to go over to Spotify to hear us and you'd rather not, please let us know at makemusicincome at gmail.com. It's in the show notes um, of every, uh, every podcast we do. It's in the show notes so you can find it there. So that's just a little bit of, of preamble, but uh, I want to talk today. Uh, we'll do our news, but today's podcast is going to be all about finding the time to compose and pitch music, and those are two big things to do and take a lot of time, and where do we find that time? But first, let's start with our news this week, because I know we both have lots of things. Yeah. Who wants to go first? Do you want to go Lots first going week, on. on. Sure, I'll start. Um, I had a great week. Uh, I wrote a couple yeah, of new songs say. for, uh, I wrote, wrote a couple of new songs for Taxi um, uh, for the briefs and uh, submitted those for review, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Uh, been preparing um, for uh, a Christmas gig that I have this Saturday. I'm excited about that. Like in a live show. Um, it's for like a work party. And uh, so I had to learn a bunch of Christmas tunes um, last last week. And uh, yeah, we're doing some classics. We're, uh, you ever heard of, uh, you ever heard Tom Petty's uh, It's Christmas All Over Again? Mm -mm. No? I don't think so. It's a classic. It's great. I mean, probably. I just don't, it doesn't ring a bell. It's a great tune. Check it out. Um, yeah, I've also been, uh, you know, just scrambling to get uh, last minute Christmas shopping done. Um, it's been a little distracting, as always. Um, did my Christmas stream yesterday uh, for the YouTube channel and for the Academy members. I showcased some of their work, uh, which was a ton of fun. Some really amazing uh, submissions uh, for uh, December's composing challenge and uh including your track by the way which was awesome so mm. really happy to feature that and you can find that link to his channel his youtube channel if you want to watch that stream yeah go it's check in it the out. show notes below yeah uh, it, was, it was really fun to do so uh, it's funny because i got a, a copyright claim on the video um i guess <laughs> because uh i didn't realize this but i guess santa claus is coming to town is uh is owned by sony atv um uh, the claim said it uh, it just it recognized that it was a cover song though, so I could opt in for a revenue share if I did monetize it, uh, which I didn't bother and, with. But anyway. it was for that song. It was for that particular song. Yeah, uh, I did a little like remix of it, a little funky uh, remix of it. So um, yeah, I think I guess the big newsworthy update from uh, from my end uh, of last week um, is that I did get paid from Artlist, uh, which really knocked me out, I guess, because, well, it was way more uh, than I thought it would be. And um, I guess I, I do want to be cautious about disclosing all the specific details in case for whatever reason, uh, the folks at Artlist, you know, don't want me to. I, ca I can't see any reason they wouldn't, um, but I'll be discreet about all the fine details. And um, I mean, to be totally honest, on on one hand, I do feel a bit like uncomfortable talking about exactly how much money I'm making from stock music because I don't want it to come across uh, as a flex uh, in any way. But on the other hand, I think it would be, you know, inspiring for people to know that there's certainly um, a lot of potential to earn money in stock and, and in the sync business overall. So um, I guess I'll... I'll just say it's it was in the ballpark of about 20 grand Canadian um, when all is said and done. And um, I'll be working on a YouTube video that goes into further detail of what I made in stock from all the libraries, not just Artlist. Um, that'll probably come out uh, on Monday or uh, early next week. So anyway, needless to say, it's been a really good year for me. I'm really grateful. And, and, and this payout on top of the Google, Google gig was, um, it really set me up. 
in a, in a good way for for the That's year. It's a ahead. nice Christmas bonus. It's a huge Christmas bonus. <laughs> uh, just I'm yeah, just kind of floored uh, by all of it, and um, it's really convenient timing, as you know, um, my fiance and I are planning on starting a family, so. Uh, this is a real blessing for both of us. And, uh, you know, if I'd come into this kind of money when I was in my early 20s, it would have been gone the next day. So, uh, you know, for someone who's pretty much been living paycheck to paycheck for most of my adult life, it's it's nice to be in a position where, you know, I'm not being crushed under the weight of credit card debt and, and trying to, uh, you know, stretch every dollar to the next payday. And uh, ultimately, the you know, the extra income from stock buys me, it buys me time and space to work on more music and that's always what it comes back to is just having the time to write and focus on that so let me um, ask you a question about artless while we're talking about it sure um because i i think this changes the game a little bit for art artists i mean you take one letter out of art art list and we're talking about artist and so yeah if you're an artist and i guess when I looked at your art list and listened to it, because I hadn't really explored it, but I mean, you've got 13 songs up. Yeah. And one's an instrumental. Well, a lot of them are instrumentals. Yeah. Almost all of them. And, and a few of them are, are you have a singer. There's, one that, there's one that has proper vocals on it. Yeah. Okay. And are, are, would you say the majority of, of art list artists that you've seen are instrumental or what is it a 50 50 split what would you say well i don't know i i there is certainly a lot of vocal music on artless but here's an interesting fact um is i could see the amount of downloads that each track got and the instrumental version of the song which had vocals on it initially um the instrumental version got way more downloads than the vocal version so that tells you a little something. Um, I think that uh, as much as vocal centric music is 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 popular, um, and we see that with the taxi briefs too. I mean, there's a lot of demand for that. Uh, I think that a lot of people are going to Artlist to get background music for their videos. So um, I can't say for sure, but it, it it is I think a safe assumption to say that like the instrumental music is is in high demand there, but. I'm sure you could find, you could do search and it would tell you how many, like if you said search with vocals and it would say there's 2,000 results and then you could do you could be right. no vocals. Last, Maybe. Last, I, a lot of if I remember like correctly, that. I don't think they, they, they give you the number, but oh, okay. I could be wrong. I'll have to go back and check. But Well, again, it's just interesting if you're an artist and or composer, <laughs> I still think because I have submitted several of my brands that were not face brands uh, and then mm -hmm. i submitted one another artist this week that i just got into motion array and she's doing quite well there and that'll be in my news but um she was not accepted but oh you got you got the older, word back she's already, an old, eh? she's an older artist huh yeah you hear back in about a day or two from from artless really they don't take long oh they took when, they took quite a while for me when it's a no it's fast Interesting is what I think, and, and that's the my been my experience with them this year. I, I sent in stuff for to them early this year, and I looked went back and looked at the emails, and it was a day or two when they got back to me and said no, thank you. Um, but hmm. so it may be it's it's the people that they do accept. There's a longer process of back and forth and stuff like that. But I, I do think it's if you look at the art list artists, it's a certain demographic as far as age a little sure, a little bit on the younger side yeah i mean there's some, there's some composers film composer kind of like type personalities on on the site which i think are probably in my age range like you know 30s 40s um but yeah no i do i do think that you're right you know looking through um the uh the range of artists that they have on there i do see a lot of young uh artists that are that are writing like you but know dude that's the music business it is when has that ever been different since the 1950s i mean uh or maybe 60s. I mean, they, the A and R people have always been looking for 20 year old phenoms and 25 year old stars mm -hmm. and 30 year old stars. Mm -hmm. You know, they rarely are looking for 50 something year old stars. Right. So, because their audience isn't, you know, radio yeah. and all that kind of stuff, and Spotify is a younger 
demographics. So it yeah. only makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good observation. But yeah. that is so great, man, because that is uh, uh, that is we've been waiting to hear that news, and so I'm super happy for you. Because thanks, uh, man. Yeah, I mean, it's it. a huge shout it's out to stuff. to Artlist for uh, you know for making it possible. It's it's really uh, I, yeah, I just I just knocked me out. I feel really blessed um, uh, for it for the opportunity, and. Uh, like I said, it's going to really set me up for uh, for a lot of composing next year. I'm stoked. Um, <clears throat> one more uh, quick announcement I, I should make before uh, you dive into your um, your weekly review is that I I, I uh, mentioned this on my live stream yesterday. The um, I, I have a new MIDI pack up on ProductionMusicTools.com. It's called Pop Strings, um, and it's just a you know it, it's about fifty progressions, uh, short string progressions that are that are kind of compatible with like sort of pop. Um, uh, arrangements just fun stuff um, all the the sales of that from 100% of the sales from that from now until uh, January 1st is, is going to charity so if anyone's interested cool. uh, check check that out and um, I'll probably be, probably make a, a donation on top of that to uh, the St. James uh, Music Academy here in Vancouver which is a, um, a great charity and a, and a school for underprivileged uh, kids to learn classical music they teach them for free uh, after school it's a really great program Cool. I am shaking my head because I spent all morning in three different string libraries building basses, cellos, violas, violins, woodwinds for two arrangements I'm working on right now, and it's it's fun to do. It's just so time consuming, it especially is, man, yeah. real or when you're really trying to build an orchestral arrangement behind an already existing pop arrangement. Yeah, and. It gets so huge so fast. Yeah. And the way I do it is com by combining all these different libraries I have to get a big full sound and, and a decent real sound. Yeah. It's... And it sounds great. It just takes forever to orchestrate it and watch your parallel fifths and watch your parallel octaves and all the different things you have to watch theory-wise. And, um, and, and then writing, you really are literally writing sections and sub and and divis divisi parts yeah you know inside sections and it's just it it's just it is it's cpu intensive and it's time consuming <laughs> so um but it pays off it's just yeah it, it just it sounds great and if i didn't have anything else to do uh that it would be just you know fun to do it's it's funny because right. I, I bought the abbey road uh two uh, strings. I bought, oh, it I, sounds I, so good. I bought the professional version, and man, I, dude, I th I think I got it. I got like my Mac Mini has trouble handling the all of like well, the mic positions and stuff. It's like it's pretty laggy. So I'm thinking like, man, maybe I need to get the new M1 Mac. This one's like a few years I don't old. No, man, I I had to uh, w using three different libraries for every section: mm. basses, cellos, violas. I would uh, do all the sections, and then I would just instantly bounce them. I wouldn't even yeah, right. try to k play the, all the or channels. I would just instantly them. bounce them because I have a 2014 Mac Mini, so it really is is struggling these days to keep up sometimes. Right. But boy, that that Abbey Road two that's another one that I would think about alongside the solos one. Yeah. From the Audio Imperia. Oh yeah. Because those 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 are great first chair parts. Yeah, you know, um, and a great like like they said has that Eleanor Rigby type sound. Yeah, it's just it reminds me of the alternative strings that they have, which is also a neat an alternative solo strings. I think is what they oh, yeah. call it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have those, but uh, yeah, I That's think I got all really the string libraries sound. I need. Um, the Spitfire solo strings, the Abbey Road two, and uh, and Spitfire chamber strings is like. Pfft, beautiful combination of uh libraries awesome. for orchestration you get a lot out of that but um awesome anyway yeah so what's uh what's going on with you i was your oh dude week? i have a big long list all okay right. so first of all uh regarding your live stream yesterday mm -hmm. um where we both uh and, and several other people i know bought the native instruments um picked pick nylon, nylon mm -hmm. guitar which is a was a great deal at 49 dollars. it's still a great deal at 99 dollars. i think it's just a great instrument my comment wasn't that I liked, I didn't like the fret noise. My comment is I couldn't hear enough squeaking noise. In other words, you know when your fingers slide up the guitar and you hear it slide and, yeah. s and squeak? Yeah. I, did, I don't hear enough of that oh, in interesting. this particular library. Oh, okay. Huh. Maybe I didn't turn fret noise up enough, but isn't that what fret noise is? Or, That's what or, I was thinking of just the squeak between when you move your hands up and down the, the neck. But um, 
Not you look at it and tell me if I'm missing something because this check, was the I'll first time out. I had played with it. And so I just, I spent most of half the time just listening to all the picking and different combinations thinking, oh, I could write a song with that. Oh, I could write a song with that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I did want to say that. Um, cool. I'll check it out. Uh, we've already talked about long videos uh, in view time, and that's something we talked about off air. But uh, that's something that we might do with this podcast is put it on our YouTube channels. And uh, these podcasts talks they go on and on sometimes uh because we get talking about things <laughs> we got to cut ourselves off um, usually <laughs> <laughs> we really do um uh, and and just about your challenge uh thing last night about the christmas he uh, the the video we're talking about was a video that you did about uh christmas a, a challenge to come up with christmas songs and mm-hmm. then you showed it all off any thoughts about the next challenge for the Production Music Academy? I have been thinking about it, but I haven't really decided yet. Uh, one of the members, uh, Mike, mentioned that it might be an interesting idea to like take one sample and then get everyone to um, come up with their own uh, version of that. But not everyone is into I th- into the whole sampling uh, like hip hop thing, so I don't know if that would uh, be suitable for everybody. But um, no, I don't know. I don't know, man. But I think uh, a genre might be. I think a genre you know, might I don't be know much about lo-fi. I, exactly, I not everyone know, is into that or, or stuff like that. So I don't know, man. Any any suggestions? It would be. Uh, I'm all ears. You know, maybe an, an interesting corporate challenge. Yeah, we've been talking about that lately. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. um, how to do corporate in different ways mm-hmm. and get and see everybody's version of what they feel like corporate is. Yeah, we'll just put out it's the just, uh, corporate technology course. Um, yeah. So that was kind of like a brand of corporate music. But yeah, corporate music is so is so vast and uh, you know encompasses so many different genres. So you could you could do it in so many different ways. So it might be a cool. Well, challenge. and you might challenge people to do it not in the audio jungle from four years ago way. Yeah. You know, n- exactly. Not just uh, an A section that builds up and down it, only. Exactly. But do something unique with it. Do your reggae version or do your you know, whatever, but make it so that it could be used in a corporate presentation yep. type of use. So. Yep. Um, all right, royalty-free news real quickly. Uh, I am doing a new video on Motion Array that will be coming out tomorrow. Cool. And uh, it's just something I, I wanted to do that was a little bit of evergreen content uh, for the holiday season, <laughs> but mainly also so that it, because I know that lots of people aren't watching videos necessarily right now because it's Christmas time, and so I yeah. wanted to do one that will have some legs. But also, it's something that I'm shocked that a lot of people don't know. There's like 40% of the people, I put a poll on my on my YouTube site, 40% don't even, haven't even heard of Motion Array. 40%? Yeah, no kidding. but you got to understand. I don't have just stock people on my channel. I have musicians. I have uh, sync licensing people who aren't in the stock world at all. Yeah, and so uh, I I think Motion Array more than any of the other stock things, especially more than Pond Five or Audio Jungle, is more like a um, the, it and Artlist are more like. Um, a sync library type quality library. Mm-hmm. And I think that even sync licensing people might want to be aware of it for monthly income. So I'm talking Absolutely. about that. Yeah. But the th- cool thing about this is, and this is going to, you're going to flip out about this. I had some questions for Motion Array, and including something that I really talk about in the video that kind of bugs me a little bit. What's that? And that is the Motion Array originals stuff that they put in there. And so I sent them an e- email and I said, listen, I'm getting ready to do a video for my growing channel here about Motion Array. It's going to be mostly awesome because I love you very much. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I do have a few minor quibbles and I, I asked them a few pointed questions like, what do you look for when people first audition? Uh-huh. Um what kind of musics do you tend to accept? Blah, 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 a few different things. And then I asked them about the Motion Array originals. I said, who is that? Is that you guys? How? Oh, I, and I can't wait to hear what they said. I, I asked them, I said, do you think it's fair that your staff picks um, put them up very highly in all of the genres? And uh, so they answered me. And so that's going to be, I'm, I'm, I have to do some reshoots because I've already shot the video. So gotta, I got to, Change back in the same clothes and redo. <laughs> so, are you, you going to keep us? After are this. you going to keep the the podcast audience in suspense here until the video comes out? 
Well, it's only it's coming out tomorrow. Okay, it, it'll be out by the time the podcast is out. <laughs> okay. <good>. So, uh, <laughs> if you want to see this video, just go to makemusicincome.com. It'll be my latest video by the time this podcast comes out on Monday morning. So, uh, you will absolutely see. Was it, it Daniel so, that got back to you? It was not. Okay. It was Maya. Maya. All so, right. Cool. I can't yeah. wait. That's awesome yeah, that they got back really to you cool. too. Yeah, it was really nice. I, I they said they would, and I was like, well, well, I don't want to wait forever to put my next video out, but. I did yeah. want to hear from them, and so yeah. I've got the answers, and so I'm going to be putting that in in the in there. Oh man, right um, great idea! So okay, um, I'm in some new uh, royalty free libraries. One is called Music Dash Bay. It's called Music Bay. I heard a guy talking about it on our Discord, right. and I was like, so I check. Whenever you hear a new one, you know, first thing you do is go check it out. So I checked it out. They're in France, and I was accepted, and. Um, it's an odd way of, just like every other library, they're completely different in the way you send them stuff. You mm -hmm. dump everything into a certain place online, like a, just a, you just g grab your files and dump them in. And 320 MP3s are fine for them. Really? If you send them the waves, they're just going to make 320 MP3s out of them. Huh. And then you have to fill out a sheet, like a, a, a Word file, they just give you a word file with, and they ask you for the description, the tags, and blah 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 blah, and you just copy and paste them in there and tell them the tempo and the time, running time, mm -hmm. and that's how you submit. It's 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 different. So, Crazy. but they're super nice, cool. really nice to talk to. So I'll let you know how that goes. I they they're not taking any more submissions till January fifth because of the holidays. So um, non exclusive. And then I joined um, another one called. Um, well, I'm in, I've joined Jamendo, and I'm Gimendo. still kind of putting stuff up there. They ask not to put more than a little bit up at a time, so they have time to really uh, put it out, which mm -hmm. I thought was cool. And so, um, and they have a whole streaming side, so we'll see how that goes. And then, what was the other new one that I'm I'm submitting to? I didn't write it down. Well, I'll remember next time I'll are, talk about Are these it, but, all uh, non-exclusive um, libraries? Yep. Cool. Yeah, all non-exclusive. That's exciting. And then I was contacted by another library to do buyout stuff for 50 to 100 bucks per tune. So I don't quite know if I'm going to do that yet. It's all non-exclusive. It's all like for a non-exclusive library. Hmm. Well, actually, it would be an exclusive library. And, I would uh, imagine if they're doing so bias, we're still yeah. kind of going back and forth about this. But in my opinion, if it's stuff that I can write, and you month you write for them monthly, and they pay you monthly, huh. and and they give you six to ten songs per month. So to me, that if that looks like a three to five hundred dollar income, yeah. extra income per month for me to write some two minute, three minute non exclusive pieces that like the ones they I've already sent them, yeah might be something I do. A lot of people would look at that and go, why in the world would you give your babies away for $50 or $100? And I'm like, well, you may never make $50 or $100 on a stock song <laughs> well, that you make. Well, you make a lot of babies too. <laughs> and I make a lot of babies. <laughs> that, that, so, yeah. I, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the thing, thing to really consider is like, is it, it yeah. I look at composing it's, like uh, it's my job. And every composition needs to go out and make something. And so you're going to yeah. have some of your kids who go out and work part-time jobs. You're going to have some kids who <laughs> you sell off into hard labor. You're gonna, <laughs> this is terrible. You're going to have some kids who become superstars and, and set you up for retirement, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's the way I think of it. Um, did they did uh, they ask you for uh, any pr a particular kind of music, or are they uh, are they looking for anything? I just sent them a bunch of different kinds, and they told me which ones they liked. They didn't particularly like Christmas music, mm. and uh, and now there's another library I'm talking to in Luxembourg. Oh no, Gemendo is the second one because they're in Luxembourg. Okay, so that's another uh, one, and they do like Christmas music. Um, uh, Pond Five, uh, little, little news we've been talking about it on Discord. They they have done away with previews yeah that's interesting like. but uh i i you know what they it was it was funny seeing the, the conversation on discord because i think a lot of people were really shocked but um i i predicted that they'd give the response that they did which is that you know they're just not necessary any, anymore um artless never had uh uh previews and, and i'm just assuming it's just the technology has gotten good enough for that they're just absolutely it's totally unnecessary at this point well both uh, both spotify and 
YouTube have ways to finger, to hear what's being played and pay whoever owns it. Yes, exactly. Um, which is another argument for content ID now. Um, you might have to start thinking about that. And I even got in, in the response I got from Ocean Array asking them specifically about uh, content ID. They did say that they do suggest, and they've, we've, we've heard this before, that they do suggest everyone puts everything in content ID. Interesting. I asked them if people were filtered out a lot because they are on content ID and they said they do not have stats for that. So hmm. um, I can tell you that. I asked them about that and I asked them about PROs and they said, we cannot, we don't have stats on how many people choose PRO stuff versus not PRO stuff. Yeah. But we do suggest everyone puts everything in PROs. You know, so. just hearing the story, like the, the occasional horror story that, you know, people uh, like that, uh, the guy who uh, on Discord just recently mentioned that, you know, he'd found his tracks uh, on someone else's Spotify account and all being stolen from him. These are tracks that presumably were downloaded from stock libraries. That's that's horrible, man. Like, that's the kind of stuff that just uh, that, you know, I'm like yeah, always worried that that's going to happen to me. So if you're registered through your PRO and you are also have your songs, one of the things you don't have to do. And I, I know this because I do this for clients. I will help them register cover songs that they want to put on Spotify. Mm -hmm. And in the past, you had to you had to give an estimation of how many streams you think might the song might get and then pay for those streams. You had to pay the mechanical oh. royalties for that. Okay. They don't ask you to do that anymore. Right. Because they can trace it now and and trace it back to who it belongs to now. So I don't know the the black magic behind all this, uh, but that is something that if you are putting your stuff in your PRO and putting your stuff in content ID, you may not have to be worried about that anymore, which is why the art lists of the world and the exclusive sync licensing people of the world, they want the content ID um, rights so that they make sure they get all the monies for the songs that are in their catalogs if somebody should take them and put them on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, well, I got, I got to actually, you know, yeah, that's come back to a previous conversation we had about the confusion around art, what Artlist is doing in, in regards to actually uh, digitally fingerprinting the music that you send them because, um, yeah, I, I would like to believe that um, that through, you know, the, 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 the deal that I have with Artlist that they're able to track uh, any any illegal use of uh, of the music in some way or another. I should ask them, you know, if they are. But they, I think they put it on content ID, don't they? Yeah, like I, I just don't know what that looks like, you know? Um, well, all that content ID money comes back to them if someone uses it. I think I'm sure that's what they're doing. And so that makes me think anything we're putting up to Motion Array, we need to make sure we have in content ID and, and yeah. not worry about things being filtered out for content ID. Right. Because uh, even Motion Array said, this is not a concern for most of our clients. They know how to get around, you know, get around the copyright claim if they desire to. Yeah. So uh, it's it's something that I'm looking now at. How do I get content ID on my entire catalog? Which I do have a fast way to do it through Song Trader, actually. And I can ask, I'll also quickly take them out of content ID, so that if I ever get something signed to an exclusive library or an art list or something like that, and I need it free of content ID, I can get it back rather than being an ad rev or identify where it's a one or three year deal and it's in there for that long. What's so. what's this, uh, what's the, the song trader has uh, their own content ID services? Like how does that They work? have a content ID monetization option. Okay. I and gotcha. you can choose it per song. And you can take it so, out right away. That's interesting to know. I, Good well, to know. I'm going to research that. I have to look at that again and see what their what their turnaround time is on taking it down out of there. Okay. Um, Motion Array and Audio Jungle are both running about seven days right now as far as getting things back. So if you uh, are wanting to get any Christmas music in, it's the 16th today. Of course, by the time this comes out, it'll be the 20th or so. So it'll be a little too late. But yeah. just so people know, uh, there's been some questions about how long it takes to get stuff into Motion Array or Audio Jungle. And if you are a person in Royalty Free Libraries, it's about seven days right now on both. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing. I've, I've had stuff... Uh, get in in about that time. Um, let's see. All right, let me scoot on down this list here. Um, 
I'm going to talk about Sync News. I had a, another song signed with uh, one of my exclusive libraries, and then I uploaded a new batch to Crucial and a new batch to Scorekeepers, nice. which is a, a library that I get a lot of things signed with, and that's a nice exclusive library people might want to look at, scorekeepers.com. They're very choosy, and you have to audition for them. But once you get in, it is an exclusive library, and just so you know, it's a two- or three-year exclusive deal with possible perpetuity deals. But okay. uh, scorekeepers.com, I believe it's scorekeepers. It might be scorekeepersmusic.com. But anyway, it's a um, it's a pretty good library. Sweet. You should look at it uh, yourself. Yeah, what's, what kind of stuff are you sending them? What, what kind of stuff is getting uh, signed? Uh, it, well, look at their name, scorekeepers. It's mostly non-vocal non music, but they've taken some vocal music. They've also said, we love this song. Can we just have the instrumental version? Mm, okay. <laughs> so, uh, again, they're looking for score uh, and back scene stuff so the majority has been instrumental okay uh, I bet they do um, and, and sometimes they tell you what they're looking for and they also have a thing of what they're not looking for so um, yeah it's a good it's a good one to look at cool um, I tracked on two libraries last week in Nashville um, well I tracked on the country library last week we did a country tracking day and still working on my classical piano sonatas library for Sony BMG nice and um I, the other, the only last thing I want to say, other than, um, you know, being involved in stock music and sync music, and with all these different libraries, including Motion Array, which is certainly worth any time you put into it once you're in it. I'm not sure I can say that about the other libraries. Now, I'll always put stuff in Pond Five just because it's a nice, easy little library that I use to pull stuff from. And probably Audio Jungle since I get paid by that one and Pond5 and Motion Array every single month almost. Mm -hmm. They're 15th of the month income, if you know what I mean. You know, you get some money. Yep. Uh, like a pay, It's like a payday now uh, of, of three to 500 or $600, you know, for, mm -hmm. for me anyway. But I'm wondering how much am I going to put into each of these? Am I going to continue to fool around with VFine and uh, any other library that's only making me a little bit of money that I'm not, I haven't even been paid for yet, and to even fool with them for a possible $50 check later uh, down the road. Like 123RF.com, I, I got a check last month for $50, but my first sale was in January. So is it worth 12 months of uploading to this library of my time to get a $50 check at the end of the year for however many sales I had to get over $50. And so I'm really looking at that, and then I'm also looking at sync music. Do I, how hard do I work at trying to go out and get shows and get relationships versus just feeding these, uh, these libraries, these exclusive libraries that have already music supervisors and people coming to them yeah. and finding the songs and using them. Am I better off to focus on the sync libraries? Now, if you talk to Jesse at Sync My Music, he's going to say yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, 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 a thousand times yes. You're better off putting your music into, uh, into these exclusive libraries and letting the libraries do the work. Yeah. And then if, if you talk to Daniel at Stock Music, he's going to say, no, uh, you, you should be – do whatever you want. Put it up to the stock stuff. Have it up tomorrow. Get paid next month on the 15th. So uh, I think there is a place that all of us as composers and producers have to get to eventually. And I am trying to find what that's going to be for 2022. Yeah. What I'm going to put my – after all this experimentation this year and, and the successes and the, and the eh, mediocre uh, results from other things, where do I really put my time? Because as you know, uh, we're both so busy – that you, you have a limited amount of time to spend. And we've got our channels, and we've got this podcast, and we've got all these other things where at some point there's there's a breaking point of how much you can do. Uh, uh, yeah, 100%. Um, this is a really interesting question and something I think about a lot. Um, for me, in like the, the way I see it, like $50 for almost a year's worth of uploading music is absolutely not worth your time. Um that being said, it's like if you can push out a lot of stuff quickly and uh, you're making 50 bucks a month, 
from you know three or four different libraries like like pond five i mean i got a dancing bear in my email the other day and i got uh, i heard that i got uh, a sale on 100 audio i got a sale on um audio jungle i'm gonna get payouts um for, for you know 50 ish dollars uh, for, for the month. And, you know, if you can do that on like four, four, well, you know, Audio libraries, Jungle and it's, like, five. it's worth it, I guess, you know, 200 bucks yeah. is, is not, it's, it's, it's a decent amount of money. Um, but you know, these libraries, they, t- they, it, they, as we all know, they take time. It takes time to upload them. And we're going to talk about that a little bit further in this podcast. Yeah, well, like I mean, this leads us right into our main topic today, yeah. which is <clears throat> when do you find the time to compose and pitch the music, and 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 I guess part of this conversation needs to be how do you decide what uh, what places that you're going to pitch. But yeah. let's talk about the composing first because I think this is the thing that most people, most clients I've worked with, uh, whether they've been artists or they've been songwriters or they've been composers for the last 20 years, all of them have to find a time in the day or the week to work on their music, uh, if especially if they have other jobs or, or they're, they have children and they're taking care of them. Yeah. Um, they have to find that time. I used to work with a guy back in the 90s when I worked corporate, and his time was at 5 o'clock in the morning. He would get up at 5 before anybody else got up in the house, even the kid, even once they had kids. And he had two or three quiet hours every single morning. Yeah. And that's how he got it done. Any, anything he want to do. I, I can relate to that. <laughs> and I've been the opposite before. I've been the late night. I My wife has generally always gone to bed at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. And I have just been wired since I was a kid to not fall asleep till at least one or two. And so I would use the 11 to two hours uh, pretty much since we got married until recently to do my my creative work. Even when I was single, I used yeah. that time, you know, to, to work on stuff because the world was quiet. Yeah. I could... I, yeah. It's, it is about all f- about finding those quiet hours. And, and I have uh, a few friends who do all the best work um, in the wee hours of the morning. Um, I, I am a morning person. Um, I, you know, I wake up early and, and I get my best work done between uh, nine and noon. Uh, that's when I'm not getting texts. You know, I'm not getting, um, <clears throat> there's not a lot going on around me. There's, there's, there's quiet, you know, um, in the world. <laughs> and then things start to kind of just like, you know, hit me from all angles as soon as like around, like, you know, noon after early afternoon. Um, and I have to switch gears into doing something that's not creative. Uh, and that's more, uh, you know, just like general life stuff or just tackling, uh, you know, the to-do list in terms of like, you know, what I got to do for the academy or, uh, or for my business, um, stuff that doesn't require a lot of creative focus, but the stuff that does require creative energy, which is composing, um, I need the world around to me to, around me to be very quiet, uh, and and I need uh, it, it takes a lot of brain power, you know, it takes a lot of brain power and a lot of concentration, and th- I, I need calm and uh, and chillness uh, around me in order to execute that properly. There are there there is time there is time for you to to do that you just have to find it in your life it might be saturdays or sundays Mm -hmm. it might be the entire day on sunday when you used to just lay around watch football or you would uh you know you would just do nothing and read the paper and nap or whatever if you really are focused on your composing it's going to be then about composing and, and, and putting that time in there. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be composing. It could be that you're a musician, you just need to practice. Yeah. You just need to, to, to work on your instrument or you need to write, you're a songwriter and you really need to work on the songs that you have. And then there is the pitching side, which is a whole different muscle in your brain than composing. You, you still have to be somewhat creative in order to pitch correctly to the libraries that you're going to put stuff up to. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what kind of licensing you're doing. You're going to have to be creative on where you find these. You're always on the lookout, just like I told you. I saw a guy mention a library I'd never heard of. I'm in it in a week, you know, uh, or less. And I think that's just a bit of you've got to have that time to and, and that could happen during your creative time your quiet time or it could happen in your afternoon time when you're a little bit more focused on projects that don't require you to be creative 
you know, that could be the time that you're really doing the the online searching for the library, the online uh, putting st- songs up to libraries and doing the mm-hmm. tagging stuff. Listen, the ta- a lot of times I take my iPad out into the into the family room when we're watching TV at night and just sit there and tag songs. Mm-hmm. And uh, go. I- I've already uploaded them. I just have to go through now and tag them. And do all the and copy the descriptions from over from Pond Five, and copy the tags from Pond Five, and copy the t- running time, and do all the things that you have to do. There's a few libraries that I can do that with. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I hate that stuff. Um, I hate the uh, I hate spending time uploading. Um, I, I get I feel like a sense of resentment about anything that takes away from the time <laughs> that I get to be creative, uh, and I'm I'm admittedly terrible. Uh, at carving out the amount of proper time it takes to uh, to pitch and to do research, you know, because that's a, another big part of it. Um, lately, I've been thinking, I, and this is like this is a, another reason why you know I love taxi is because like you know it's, I'll gladly pay someone else to do this uh, this kind of stuff for me um, and pitch my music. I I've been thinking a lot lately, uh, and this came up in the Discord. Someone mentioned that they you know what what were uh what were the thoughts generally about hiring a virtual assistant and um you know the, these kinds of services exist online you can go you can there's plenty of companies that uh, uh, uh hire out the virtual assistants to help you with whatever you need uh, help with um but uh, i i've been thinking lately you know uh, to be honest with you it's like there's a there's a music production school here that i went to like ages ago and a lot of the students come out of that school looking for uh some mentorship and some and some you know and some work and like i I, yeah and like i would be and i lately just this last week i've been thinking about a lot it would be nice to kind of reach out to them and see if uh, anyone any of those students would be interested in learning about like sync licensing uh and the kind of music production that i do um and i'd be willing to pay uh for you know them to to tag and and to upload you know my music and uh and, and to do all these menial tasks that i you know i hate doing um uh with the understanding that you know they could pick my brain about uh about music licensing and and uh and and that kind of thing so that, i've been thinking about it you know because it's to me it's just like all i really want to do is write music you know i i kind of like i kind of I'm not a great business-minded uh, person when it comes to like you know doing the research and and uh, and uploading my tracks. I just kind of get tired uh, and and annoyed by that process. Well, so. but uh, dude, everybody gets tired and annoyed. There, there's no getting away from it. I mean, I don't yeah. see. I mean, unless you become so rich that you've got virtual or, or or assistants doing all that for you on a daily basis, they're just coming over and and you're saying, okay, I'm finishing up a mix. Uh, here, here is the 24-bit wave. Make you can make it into any kind of 16-bit or MP3 or mm-hmm. whatever that they need. Upload it. You do all that stuff. And and if you if you've got the ability to hire that out, you can do that once you once you reach a certain status. I certainly think. But yeah, well, um, you have. I think to the majority of our audience, including me and you right now, still have to do it ourselves if we want it done. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you're doing your podcast and your your video channel and everything yourself, and you're you're getting. And I know you have concerns about social media. I I don't necessarily worry about social media as much as I used to. I used to be, I used to really think that was the only way we could get the word out is social media, mm-hmm. and now I think that people will find you where they are. And so most of our audience on podcasting is gonna find us because they are searching around for podcasts. Mm -hmm. Most of our audience on YouTube finds us because they're YouTube people looking at different channels and looking for channels to follow. Most of the people that you find on Facebook and then you start a Facebook group are gonna be Facebookers just sitting around bored looking for information on this. Same with Instagram, same with all of these things, even TikTok. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think to some extent we're going to have to do it, but I, I know what you mean. Um, I, my biggest thing that I hate right now is the f- getting to the end of a day and feeling like I don't have enough hours to get everything done and I didn't accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish in that day. Dude, that's like every, that, every single day for me. <laughs> yeah. I, every yeah. single day I, get, I go to bed thinking like, ah, I didn't do enough. <laughs> it's it's a brutal feeling, and, and most people would look at us and go, "They do so much." Yeah, I mean, it's relative. How it's all could relative. they feel like that? <laughs> but you know what? Mozart felt like that. Yeah, uh, Bach felt like that. Um, Beethoven felt like that. They they felt like failures their entire careers, 
un unless they were getting accolades on the stage, the rest of the time was in obscurity and, and worrying about uh, Schumann went literally crazy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all these, all these great composers and rock and roll stars and everything throughout our, everybody has felt, feels like this. Um, you wouldn't believe the amount of amazing f people that tell this same story. You've probably heard it a million times on VH1 or behind the music or whatever. Yeah. So that's a natural thing, I think, that we're, we're both feeling. And it's just because we have such a, a an appetite and a uh, we're just so uh, got a lot of ideas to get things done. A lot of ideas you know? kicking around and not enough time to execute them all. But uh, yeah, it's the dream. Having that is, that help is the dream. You know, having that help is the dream, and uh, it would it would sure be nice to to have some assistance and um, you know carve out I will more say time. This, this podcast is going to come out on December twentieth, which is right before the holidays, and this this next two weeks are going to be slower weeks. Mm -hmm. You may not work as much in these next two weeks, and these are going to be great times to do more get, composing. Get caught Maybe up. You don't do any pitching during this time. Maybe you just have more quiet time than usual. That's true, and it's a it's a time I get a lot extra done. Yeah, good, a lot of times. good point. I'll probably be uh, writing music on Christmas Day. <laughs> and it also, this all depends on your goals. Are you trying to be a serious composer and make music income, or is this like kind of a, just a fun thing? And a, and a lot of people listening might just be like, dude, I I don't I have a job. I'm a doctor or I'm a lawyer. I I have, and that's my. I'm not going to ever make in music what I make in my career. So. I'm just kind of doing this for fun, but I do need to find that time. And even you, the non-serious or hobbyist person, or even somebody maybe doing this as a side hustle, you've got to figure out that time and when you're going to compose, mm -hmm. when you're going to pitch. And pitching could mean a lot of different things. Pitching could mean putting it in motion array or finding exclusive libraries or finding an A&R or record company that would might be interested in your music or finding a publisher yeah all these things well we saw it in, in the survey results i mean there is quite a, a large percentage of the people that are aspiring or you know endeavoring to to do this full time so um i imagine that a lot of people listening do want to transition to uh this being like a full-time career and like you said in order to do that i mean you really especially if you when you're working a job and like i understand this you know uh really well because you know for the longest time uh, I was working 40 hours plus a week at a coffee shop and, you know, I really, really wanted to quit, um, and, and transition to doing music full time. Um, and in order to do that, I had to, man, I had to make some sacrifices in terms of, uh, you know, how I was spending my time outside of work. Um, <clears throat> for, for years, I, I woke up, you know, maybe four or five hours really early in the morning before I went to work. And that's when I got all my, my music stuff done. Then I'd go to work, uh, do eight hours at a co at a busy coffee shop, um, and then sometimes I'd go play a gig in the evening, you know. And that's that's uh, that and that's but that was burning the candle at at both ends uh, for me. Like luckily that was you know I, I did that when I was a bit younger, and, and it was a little it, you know it gets harder to do that kind of thing as you get a bit older. But um, that's what it took in order to uh, you know finally get to a place where I could com comfortably quit the, that job and um, start relying on my uh, on my music income full time and it wasn't easy it was it was really difficult and i had to make uh, a lot of sacrifices in terms of like what i was doing on uh, my leisure time you know less hanging out with yeah. friends less less drinking less partying and um yeah. and less tv going to bed yeah less tv going to bed early and waking up you know those four or five hours precious hours before i had to get to work and and uh and working on my music man that's what it, that's what it took yeah well, that's a that's a good subject, and I think we've covered that pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any questions from any of your folks or anything else that we need to cover this week? I have a few yeah. things. Yeah, there was a, a really interesting question that someone brought up in the academy. Uh, one of the new members was asking about. <clears throat> there, there seemed to be like uh, this anxiety about having. Uh, the, about like having all these like social media profiles like set up uh, before you start getting into stock and I think that there was this um, yeah this sort of like uh, you know it seemed like the, the this the, the question that was brought forth was just like okay like how much does this stuff matter like do you need a TikTok account do you need a Spotify account do you need all these um, th these ducks in in a row before you start 
uh, your journey in stock. And I, I really think that it's important as a beginner, like if, when you're starting out in this, and if you're just going to, you're just starting out with stock music, like just worry about the music, man, you know, just get your music on those libraries. Everything else will fall into place, but the, you have to focus on the fundamentals was, which is just, uh, writing good music at the end of the day that's all that really matters start small don't overwhelm yourself you know don't worry about getting all these uh all the socials and don't worry about you know having different uh avatars for different you know accounts and different personalities for different types of music like it it will all get so overwhelming for you if you are uh, if you're taking this all on before you've even really started uploading music onto onto these libraries just it's not about music I mean, it's exactly. more about this is the people are treating stock music libraries, which are music for use libraries where you're putting up music for people to use. They're never the c- clients are never at least for Pond5, Audio Jungle, and I'm talking royalty free libraries. Let's not let's leave Artlist and Music Vine and stuff like this out of that because that's it's a different kind of that's a different kind of library, I think. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe. But. You're talking about stuff you think about when you're an artist. When you're an artist, yeah, you want to have all that stuff set up. And yeah, if you are going to apply to Artlist, guess what the first things they ask you are? What's your fo- what's your Facebook following like? What's your YouTube following like? What's this like? I know because I just went through that in the past week, you know, went uh, putting a few brands up there and mm-hmm. they ask, "What are your followings on Facebook? What are they on YouTube? What are they on Instagram?" So for 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 more label type things where you're going to be judged on that, it's important. For Pond 5, for Audio Jungle, all they care about is having more tunes that people can use in their YouTube videos. Yeah, It has nothing, no one's ever gonna go look at your TikTok because you put something on on, on Audio Jungle it, or, or Pond 5. It's mm-hmm. not that, this isn't, um, this isn't a record label, this isn't, uh, even if you were going to put music on television and pitch it to music supervisors, then you might want to have all these yeah. kind of things lined up. Yeah, because they're going to want to know what's your background and and where else do people audiences know of you? Yeah, I, I think you nailed it. It's just like if 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 your intention is to be an artist first and foremost, then these things matter, of course. Um, do it. But if you're if you just want to get some music like license, if you just want to get your foot in the door with the the music licensing stuff, just start where it's easy start where it's easy don't overwhelm yourself get some tracks up on pond five that's a great place to start uh see if you make any sales there there's a lot of other libraries like pond five where you can easily just like kind of get started um and work on your craft as a music producer first i think the reason they're asking this is because they see people like morning beats or or uh morning light or whoever it is all those play wave wave beats wave sounds or whatever it is yeah and they see they have these great big U- youtube and and uh social media followings mm-hmm. and but what they don't understand is a lot of those people got started way earlier than now i don't think in totally uh, they they focused on a a brand um and and they focused on a social media following uh, yeah, but they probably got that social media following after they had already had five hundred thousand hits on Audio Jungle or something like that, and that didn't come this year. It probably came years ago. Well, that Morning Light dude, uh, uh, Matt, I can't remember his last yeah, name, but Matt he, High, he, um, um, yeah, High yeah, he, uh, I think, I, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure that he blew up on. He was doing well on Audio Jungle, but he went exponential as soon as he put his uh, stuff up on YouTube. And I think there was a golden age and a time where yeah. um, you could upload your those kinds of royalty-free tracks on, on YouTube and get a lot of traction um, on them. He was writing really good sync music too, but I mean, and that obviously plays into it, but he um, was probably one of the earlier guys to get in on that, uh, promoting his royalty free stuff on YouTube. I think once he did it and, you know, his videos started getting millions of views and he started, you know, really selling a lot of uh, music on Audio Jungle. I think a lot of people uh, uh, jumped on that bandwagon. And I think it's 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 much more difficult to get uh, traction on that uh, kind of stuff on YouTube these days, I think. I could be wrong. But, but you also have to know his his motivations. He has a great interview you can find on 
on YouTube with Graham Cochran, right. where he talks about the fact that he is an artist first and he thinks of himself as an artist first. And it just so happened that the Audio Jungle thing took off. Yeah, that's so, yeah, right. He said, I forgot yeah, about I'll make that. some more. Because he was going to quit doing Audio Jungle and then he had a song take off. Yeah. And he's like, well, I got to keep feeding that that thing because it's making me money but he he has struggled if you go watch his channels you'll see where he's tried to be an artist and gone back to being morning light and gone back to being an artist and he i think he really like we just talked about has the artist mentality yeah instead of the composer for uh and this is just what I've, I see. Now, this may not be the case. But from what I see, he has the – and I've talked with him a few times on email and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has that artist mentality. So he probably really focuses on his Instagram. If you, Stevie, if you decided that you wanted to, you could really only focus on – you could get rid of Production Academy and you could go focus on art list and on your Instagram and on YouTubes of just your music and your remixes and all that kind of stuff and be Stevie st- and, and and really focus on you. Mm-hmm. But you choose to focus on other people and offer advice through your channel like I do um, rather than uh, focus. I mean, art list is the most st- st- uh, artist type thing you do almost. You know, besides your Spotify. Well, besides I mean, the I besides the band stuff, I mean, I, I get plenty of, uh, like, you know, I get my artist fix through uh, <laughs> through the, through the band world, and I and I've done that to death, right? Like, if people don't, I don't talk about it a lot on the YouTube channel, but like, that's where I come from. Is just like, like, you know, ten plus years of hustling in bands and like and doing the the grind of being an artist, and it's like, uh, I wouldn't say I'm sick of it, but it's like I've I've had my fill on that end so uh it's and it's nice to you know and i'm always going to feel like i'm approaching this from a from an artist mindset like uh you know um like matt does but uh i'm interested in in just writing you know like that's what i want to do and um if that means making income through sync music like that's great as long as whatever it is you know as long as i'm just here in my in my studio writing music like i'm happy i don't have to be uh uh, an artist first and foremost. And I, and I like helping people, you know, and I like, I like making friends online like yourself and like, I like uh, building community. And so that's what the Academy is all about. Um, so I, I'm not hyper-focused on the artist thing, but it's always going to be there because, you know, I am an artist. So <laughs> it's, if you look at, if, and you, if you hear the guys from taxi who are, um, full time at this or people like, Jesse with Sync My Music and the people he talks to. Mm -hmm. The people who are making six figures at licensing aren't worried about being artists. They probably don't even have an Instagram or or worry about it. They probably don't even worry. They're not on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They're not on TikTok. They are composing to continue making six figures income. And they're focusing on getting tons of music into their catalogs because that's how they continue to make that income and they're not they don't need to be famous with a with a tick they don't need to be tiktok famous all they need to be is check in the mailbox famous yeah yeah <laughs> and and the and the flip side to that is that like you can leverage the power of being a notable artist to to create six finger figure income you know what yep. i mean so it's like if you're already making that without having to go through the trouble of, you know, being a TikTok, um, you, you know, superstar, then that's great. Right. And it's like, there's probably very little incentive to, to, to I'm really to looking that. forward to your TikTok channel, by the way. Um, I, in, I already have I, it. I bet you, you probably have some dances and stuff that I'm not doing any do. dances on the TikTok channel. I, t- <laughs> <laughs> I play some, uh, a, a few little guitar, uh, tunes. Um, oh, there you go. I have not paid attention to, uh, enough attention to TikTok, but, but yeah, I mean, it's like if you go the artist route and, and you want to, uh, you know, if that does well for you, then you, that could easily translate to six figure income as well. So it goes both ways. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good uh, a good place to stop probably for this week. Um, cool. You think we got enough? Yeah, I think uh, so. For this week. I think that's a lot. And we've, we've tackled some very big subjects today. And so, you know, I hope this gives everybody out there a, a good a, – a, we try to give our personal, um, our personal, not just opinions, but 
what that what happens to us on a weekly basis is you can listen to this podcast and see the worlds can completely change your your year your financial year can completely change in a week yeah. in in this kind of stuff or your 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 monthly uh, income can change weekly and so that's one thing that we talk about but also the realities of being composers and 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 making income I think uh, is an artist. I mean, we're talking a lot about being artists and I'm talking a lot about artist stuff right now on my channel, Yeah, how to be an artist and still be a composer. And then I'm talking with uh, Tom Dupree in a few weeks about how to, you know, uh, hack your Spotify up with, with Facebook ads and all that kind of stuff. And he's not someone who does any kind of licensing. He has all sorts of other kind of incomes, including NFTs and he's into Bitcoin and, yeah. All these other things that we don't even think about because we're so focused on licensing and composing and things like that. So all sorts of income and music that we could talk about. Well, so, I'm definitely going to uh, chat more about uh, about growing and um, uh, as an artist, like I'm not going to change the like the focus of my YouTube channel will always be, uh, you know, music production um, in general. Uh, but I will be making a concerted effort throughout the next year to sort of fine tune the uh the artist profile um and uh and yeah i mean i'm gonna dive harder into social media i, I mean it's still one of these things that i kind of like uh i'm a little bit um wary of like you mentioned before um but i think that there's a way to do it um so that you're bringing a lot of opportunities to the table i've already seen um that play out for me in just this last month uh, in a really in spectacular way so i'm gonna be diving a, a lot into that through the academy and a, through YouTube. A whole show on that, just what, how you how you focus on social media, yeah, and what are the best ways in twenty twenty two to focus how to manage on, that, yeah, yeah, how, what and why you do that, you know, why right. TikTok, right. why Instagram, why Facebook, if Facebook, uh, why YouTube, why Spotify. And I think you start to get to those. You, you run out of ones you really have to do. I think Twitter's kind of out of the picture now. Yeah, and, pretty much. Um, you, Facebook is uh, out of the picture. LinkedIn for me. is really more for business. I know some people who use it, but it's more of a business thing than it is really a a, a, a music uh, well, a promotional tool. Well, it's a great way to find uh, some music supervisors. Yeah, you they're can. all in LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about artist type building. Uh, things and I'm talking a lot about yeah. that on my channel. So maybe next month, once I have a lot of this information about how to hack uh, your how to hack a Spotify audience uh, without you know making a big bundle in Artlist. But th that's the other thing we didn't talk about with your Artlist success is the, uh, oh, the Spotify success that's come with. That. Yeah, we well we can we can maybe end it on that note because I, I did actually just before we started here I took a look at the back end of um, uh, my DistroKid payout and it's a little bit tricky because they I think they do it quarterly like calculation um, so I, I think it'll be more money than this but right now my my bank is at 120 bucks which is you know pretty dismal uh, for I think some of the songs are are nearing like 10,000 streams I think like one of them is at eight eight or nine or something like that so um, not insignificant you know of course but um, yeah, there's there's money to be made on streaming because uh, it's not just yeah. Spotify, right? It's like it's Apple Music, it's all the other DSPs too. Um, so, yeah, what I'm talking about with Tom is is how to do. Fa he's him and another guy named Andrew Southworth, who I hope to interview as well. They really focus on Facebook ads to rev up your following. On you're basically mining people from Facebook that are on Facebook that want to listen to Spotify. And want to listen to the style that you have. Yeah, I, I've, sending them to spot. I've heard about this. The guys from Inde, Inde, uh, Indepreneur, uh, I think I was telling you about them a few weeks ago. Um, they're into that too. I, I'm a little skeptical that Facebook has the uh, as the marketing power that it once had. Uh, I feel like a lot of that has moved over to Instagram. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm curious to hear what he has to say, and and it's an interesting thing to uh, yeah to filter in people from Facebook ads. Um, there's an uh, there's a big investment there. <laughs> I think it's like yeah. it's a little risky in terms of like the payoff. Um, well, we we get into in our interview about where the where the where you break even and where you start making profit. Right. So that'll be part of that cool. interview. We'll talk about it. Yeah, looking forward to that interview. Yep. 
All right, man. Well, great talking with you as usual. And everybody out there, I hope you just keep making music income. Find time to compose and pitch. And if you have any questions, you can get in touch with us in the information below. And yeah, happy holidays. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Absolutely.